Okay, so I want to talk about these free. Um, one of the things I like about Ableton Live is obviously the initial purchase can be daunting a little bit. But if you get the suite, the Max for Live stuff is incredible of what you can do to create. And I just wanted to show you a couple plugins, uh, particularly one. I'll show you three of them, but I'll show you one. And I'll put the link in the description of the video I found them in. Um, technically, somebody will show me and I just appreciate them showing me, especially being that they're all free. OK, um, so let's talk about it. So I have here a piano set up. This first one is called, as you can see over here, it's called Tree Sequence. And it's a sequencer that automatically generates the sequence right for you. But you can pick the scale it's in. You can pick the direction it goes. You can pick the um, the uh, the rate that it's going to use, the velocity of the note range, um, the depth of it. You can pick the rotation of how it goes. You can pick the hits. And of course, it has the random switch is what I use. And here's your triangle pyramid of this tree, right? And here's the notes in that sequence. And so you put that at the beginning of it. And then here's my piano. I'm using the uh, Unicorda felt piano from Native Instruments. This is Kalen Ellis um, KFX 2.0. He just dropped it. If you get a chance to check out his stuff, Kalen is an amazing producer uh, who is on YouTube as well as Twitch. And I like this. It's not that you can't sit here and build this yourself, but it's nice that he put it all together and made it easy. And one of the things I like in here he added was the sample delay. So let's see if you go here, not there. If you go here, let me see if I click on the sample delay. So here's the sample delay. It's right here. And I'll open up this portion. And so if you can see right in this right here, it's it's like a um it's just a delay, right? But it it's kind of cool. And he has it set to the re uh, pitch mode, which is really good for like putting it over samples, kind of making it sound like it's delayed a little bit, like it's um like a record maybe, like a slow down record a little bit. So that's one of the things I use that. Here, I'll close that out so it doesn't get too crowded. And then this is all, and by the way, all this stuff from here and here is built into the suite. So none of this stuff in these two plugins here that are these two racks, I should say, are something you won't have access to if you have the suite. This one is free, and this is the one I'm showing you the feature of. And so what it does is here, I'll solo it out by itself. So it's creating this melodic melody. Now I added delay, a little chorus to it. I added this reverb. I added a little filter to it. So you can do whatever you want. And then I, and one of the things is you can resample in here really easy. So I resampled that melody and call it a melody arp and here it is. So keeping it simple, we'll turn that off so it doesn't go through the background. So I resampled that and now I made myself a little melody arp type loop that I could play chords over or whatever I want to do. I set it to B Dorian and then I went up to Scalar and set scale, found some chords in B Dorian that I liked. And I played those chords into the Una Chorda right here. Okay, so all I did. So now I have a sample melody arp i have the chords here's what the chords sound like by themselves Hold on. they're dark pattern right a bars were the chords there's the melody now the melody sounds like this over the chords oh, let me do command there we go so it gives it a little movement
then what you can do is once you record it in, you can turn the gain up. I turned my gain up about 6 dB. Um, you can turn it up more if you want. That's up to you. Make your adjustments according to what you, you're here. Now, mind you, I'm playing through the MacBook speakers, so they're not as loud as if I was playing through a big speaker set. I think at some point I am going to get some more speakers down the road. Um, I got rid of my studio monitors. They were bulky. They were heavy. They were just taking up a lot of space. And I rarely would use them. But I think every now and then it's good, especially if I'm doing a video, to have something. And I finally figured out how to record uh, my screen on the MacBook. It's definitely not as easy as the iPad is. iPad is so much more easier to do. But I do enjoy um, making music more on the Mac just because of, of the endless possibilities I have right now with this. Um, okay, bass, you guys know, getting back to the subject here, is, is I use Trillion, the muted bass, Petrucci R&B bass, and I just usually remove the tape off of it just so I don't have an extra hiss that I don't want. And then this is what it sounds like with the bass added. It's really simple. I'm all actually just following the, the, um, the root notes of the chords, and then I added in like one other, at the end here, I added in one little different note just to give it some variation. So... <laughs> This is not mixed, by the way. This is just real simple. I do turn my bass down a lot, though. Usually, like six, at least six de uh, dBs down. All right, that's enough. I don't have to hear the whole thing. So it's not even a completed beat. I just wanted to show you this plug in really and what it can do it kind of helps you develop some little back art melody type vibe going on now the other ones here i'll show you i'm not going to do a lot with them right now because this is called slice sequence and so it is let me see if i can zoom in a little bit and i'll move i'll move this around and make it easier okay maybe i'll zoom out so Slice Sequencer is more for slicing, right? So if you brought in some type of um, sample, let me see if there's a sample in here I could just use. These are like one shot. All right, that's fine, we'll bring that in. So here's a sample, you go to Slice Mode, you can do by transits if you want. Um, and why didn't it just slice it for me? Let's do re well, we could do regions. Let's do trans. It's not doing anything with transient. So I'm going to do beat. Oh, that's too much. Let's change the divisions maybe to like a quarter. And then, hold on, let me put the. Um... So I'm going to move this over about right there. Perfect. Let's see if I can put the. Uh record on so you can hear the slices. All right, so you can. So this is me just playing it on the keyboard. You can see wherever I hit the note, it's gonna pick that slice. I probably wouldn't normally do divisions like this. Let's try, let's just do regions again. Where's the Starting at C1, okay. I don't know why it's on C2. Does it pick? I haven't used this one yet, so I'm you're seeing what I'm saying. I'm gonna do random. So you can do random every and change how many bars. You could just do random. You can do the velocity uh, settings here. You can do it forwards, backwards. You can pick, uh, you want it to do eighth or whatever on that. So let's see if we play. Let's play over here though. See how it's doing? So it's randomly picking Let's see. So weird. This was not impressing me right now, but I, but when somebody knows how to use it, it works really well. Um, I have to work with this one a little more, so I apologize in advance. I'm just showing you, these are free. 
slice sequence. Um, all these are made by, I think, individuals who are passionate about what they do. And this is not one I was really going to feature, but I just wanted to show you. But you can, it does work when you know how to set it, right? I haven't, I, need, I guess I need to play with it a little more. You can sync it to the um, tempo. And I'm not sure on this sample why it doesn't play. Like, I don't know if I need to pick notes. There we go. Now it's working. So in Drombo on the iPad, there's this ran there's that random slice thing, right? Where you can randomly slice and it'll and I used it in videos. In fact, in some of my songs on my previous albums that I did that I dropped on Bandcamp, um, I used the random slice where it would just pick something random. That's what this is, basically. And you can tell it do it every bar or every two bars. Normal mode. So what's cool about this is you can pick your, let's say you know you're, um, you're playing in a certain, uh, like Dorian or whatever, and or, or major, you just play on major, and you know you only need certain notes, like, like this should be, I think that's C. Yeah, so that's C1. So you might get rid of something like that. It, it depends on what you're doing, but when you're just picking slices, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's sliced into eight slices, so you only have you only have eight to do right here. See, your regions is set to eight, so you could increase the regions and do like sixteen, and now you see you have sixteen. Transpose it. I'll put a filter. And come up with some cool sequences like that. And then resample that sequence, right? To something, to a track, and then build your track off of that. I'm just showing you the possibility. So apologize earlier. This is my first time. This one, the tree one I used now twice at least. But this one I haven't used much, so I'm learning it just like anything. But you can do the velocity changes. So maybe you don't want it to hit so hard. You want it to hit like around 90 and your lowest point is going to be like a 50 something. And the depth or, or uh, delay rather, you can put delay on it. This is delay, not depth. I don't know why I keep saying depth. Anyway, you can do some crazy stuff with that. So that's one thing. So slicing with that. All right, let's get rid of that. And then the last one, I think I just deleted my chords by mistake. All right, the last one is, um, let's go back to my user folder. It's called Clip Sequence. Now, this works best when you're in the clip mode. And I probably will never use it because I'm not a big fan of clip working with clips now for those that are no it's not disrespectful it's just just not me okay but it does have like the legato the trigger the global the bar what you wanted to do so you could set this to only trigger certain things at certain times or see how you want to sequence your um your clips you could have it you could basically build a sequence of it i'm not really going to ever use this i downloaded it because it was free so you can check it out. I will post the link to the video I watched to find these where this uh, young woman explains it uh, way better probably than I did. But I'm just kind of introducing you to it. Like, oh, this is really cool features that you can use, right? So for those that always say, well, you, that, you should learn it and then explain it. No, because I'm not here trying to teach you. I'm just showing you what 
is out there. What I found when I discover something, I show it to you. If you want to learn about it, go watch somebody who actually uh, uses a lot of those. Some of these I do use, some of them I don't. Now, the melody one, I definitely will be using it more often to create little sequence loops. I don't need it. I can play a melody if I want to play a melody, but it's just fun to give you some variation in what you're doing and who knows what I'll discover down the road if I like it even more. All right, that is it for this video. Just wanted to introduce you to these three. So you have tree sequence, slice sequence, and clip sequence. And these are sequencers. They're, they're just a MIDI controller, in other words, right? That sequence inside of Ableton. They do not work anywhere else. They're, they're an Ableton Max for Live plugin. They are free, so it didn't cost you, it doesn't cost you anything if you already have Ableton Live standard, or um, not standard, I'm sorry, suite, where you have Max for Live, you're good, right? I think they work on... I think you have to have 11, but I may be wrong on that. You'll have to just look it up when you when you find it. And then I'll show you the link and post it in the video. All right, I'm out. I'll be introducing you to some more things that I found that are pretty cool. Um, I think I showed you guys fours. Fours make some cool stuff. I'll, I'll introduce you. I got a reverb from them and a, a little pluck instrument they made. Those are actually two that were free, if I'm not mistaken. And I like to show you the free stuff because, well, you know, that's the cool stuff is free. Um, there's also, they made a bass that they put out for free called Load. And I don't remember if I did a video. I'm trying to keep up, but there's so much going on. I'm doing these videos in my spare time. I'm not really like a real true YouTuber per se, but, but I do like introducing people to new things and things I find. All right, I'm out.